place or thing? I guess I'm Cat tonight. Uh, Hi, Cat. Welcome. With me as always is Amanda's. Hi, I'm Amanda. <laughs> um, we have notes somewhere. They didn't give them to me. You can tell I'm Cat. I've got the biggest bosom here and the most luxurious gray hairs. How are you doing today, Amanda? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty great. Yeah, that's right. I'm Amanda. Hi. I'm Amanda. Fantastic. Amanda? Uh, I'm doing pretty goddamn great. Thank you, Kat. Fantastic. Amanda? I'm great as well. Good to great. hear. Great. Yeah. Tonight's musical guest will be the Stochastic Metal Union, who I practiced all day trying to say their name and still got it wrong. Maybe. We'll find out if they hit me after the show or not. Our subject today is creative difficulties. Right? What's that? Creationism? I brought my Bible. Fantastic. Today's subject is now creationism. Amanda, please lead us. Thank you. Um, you need to open with a prayer. Well, Would you you're like at to lead that. with Amanda? Oh, I'm good, Amanda. You right. Amanda? I you know think what? I'll, uh, I, th I think I'll... Amanda, no, I'll you figure that out. Fives holding this. Amanda. Can someone else hold this? Yeah, I no, want to walk on clouds. Bring me the green screen. Excellent. So, creations in Genesis. Tell us about our creationism. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's very difficult to create um, to create a whole system of things for people to uh, consume. Uh, yeah, isn't that right? That is right. Very right. When you're cooking, making music, doing art. It make sucks it a... when someone eats your art. Yep. Excellent. Gotta have a whole. Excellent, excellent. You know, I can tell we we're all well prepared for this episode. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But they handed us the matches to this dumpster fire, and we're gonna burn it to the ground. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see where it goes. Now, a comedian once told me that everyone in Portland has a Portland job on top of their day job. The creative effort they wish they had more time to go about. Musician, poet, porn actor, whatever it may be. I myself used to consider myself an author. In preparation for this show, I depressingly realized I haven't published in five fucking years. How long till I'm no longer a professional, Amanda? Maybe you're not. Uh, what do we bring? I've been trying. In fact, I spent a whole hour and a half before the show talking about muting the Skype. It's very loud. It is. It is very loud. All right, Amanda, which one of you is tech savvy? Not me. Um, I can close the computer. Do you think you're prepared for that job? None I'm of us are tech savvy. I'm not prepared for any job, but I get them. True. No. All right, they'll figure it out when we hang up on I'll be back. Give it a shot. <laughs> Give it a shot. Well, he's at that. There was one time when I created an art. I thought it was pretty. No one else did. That's okay, though. All right. On the plus side, 
I'm going to assume it's not echoing for our Twitch viewers, who, thank you for joining us, Internet. Hey, it turns out someone's actually watching who's not me for once. Wow. That's a whole... I'm equally surprised. A whole person. Yeah, I'm going to put a crowbar through that thing. Yeah, close the window. They'll figure it out. <laughs> Problem solved. Yay. Let's minimize their screen. <laughs> Let's not give away all of their Facebook settings. Hey, look, everyone's live in the background. We're in the clouds with yep. the mountainside now. Fantastic, fantastic. I always feel like lecturing when I'm standing at a podium. What are you going to teach me, Professor? See, herein lies the problem. When I'm at a podium, I want to start lecturing about political science, but I've been for forbidden from calling for the overthrow of the government on live television. Yeah, we can't do that. Mm. So, what if we pre-recorded your call to action? We did that before, and that's why I'm forbidden, because it's already <laughs> happened. Or we stick to the guidelines before Jacob comes out with the cattle prod. That is true. Jacob will cattle prod us oh, if we I get too far. Oh, I didn't know there were cattle prods involved. Oh, it's oh yeah, pretty hard. no. Uh, like, hard. after every episode. Yeah. I would have been here sooner. It's my favorite part of coming on the show. Right, yeah, at the end of the episode, I will get beaten to death in front of your eyes. Wow. Sweet. You get to look forward to that. You don't twitch. We're not allowed to broadcast that on the internet. It's unfortunate. Unless you know certain dark web websites where Jacob uploads the videos. They're Might pretty be in sweet. my Facebook group. Might be. We just get a new clone every time. That is true. That is true. That is true. So what is your Portland job, Amanda? Which Amanda? I don't care. <laughs> what was the question? What is your Portland job? What do you do outside of your... I usually spend 10 hours a day, four days a week on my knees. Oh my god. Praying. Um, while people scream at me. Right. Right. Um, and a lot of them still have diapers, so... Mm -hmm. Things are thrown at you, you get yeah. punched. Sometimes you're covered in pain. You, yeah. you never know what they're into. You're lucky if it's pee, to be honest. Yeah. We, we work in the same field. Pee helps you wash it off. I've read this story before. I'm the one who pees. That's my job. Our esteemed client. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Amanda. I don't get paid enough for this. That is my decision right now. All right. What was the last thing you created? into your young hopeful eyes and briefly I have that sensation of being a teacher again when I could shape and mold young minds and just knowing that in about 40 minutes you're going to be so crushed with disappointment and the that usual. hopeless ennui that comes from expecting anything out of me like the fact they even set this up just shows their low level of expectation I would respond but I can't hear you I know. I can't hear you guys either. We're just kind of yelling at the wind right now, and it is amazing. All right. My clone in the control room is apparently trying to score drugs on the Twitch stream. Or is preparing dinner. I'm going to go with the latter. Sometimes for dinner, you though. can do both at once. Maybe both at once. Uh, in answer you to your who? question... Huh? You mean who? In answer to your question, Amanda, it is a sad truth of the self-published writing field. You can write what you want, and no one's going to buy it. Or you can write terrible, terrible porn, and people will buy a ton of it. That's true, because I buy it. Yes. People buy a lot of it. Have you, have you written some of my favorites? Is what? that what you're about to tell me? Do you have a pen name? I don't know your reading habits. I you might have. You do, though. Okay, I might know your reading habits, and I might have written some of your favorites. Wait, aren't you the author of Fifty Shades of Grey? Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah. I do not read heterosexual nonsense. No, it's it was... BDSM Wikipedia. It's Fifty One Shades of Red. Ugh. It's a little bit of a knockoff, but I enjoy it a lot more. That is... I like this. Tell me more. That was such a... 
for people who self-publish like I was doing, that book was gloriously nightmare because it's proof that you don't have to know what you're doing to make enough money to kill someone by burying them in hundred dollar bills. And yet, every third chapter would have gotten one of my books pulled from Amazon for violating their terms of service. Yeah, if you can figure out how to mute that, Amanda, feel free. Like, they're welcome to call back. Just, none of them are competing with me. I am the star of tonight's show. You get to gaze into my silky, corn silk smooth beard and just dream. Just dream. Dream with us all for a moment. I think I'm having a nightmare. Mm. Just imagine the beard feeling you, running over your skin. I need to call for a ride home. You're trapped here with the rest of us. I mean, you know the door locks from the outside, right? We literally don't get to leave. They're going to gas us to sleep. And the next thing you know is we'll be waking up a chain together as they beat us to death one by one. Well, at least they'll get to sleep. That doesn't happen much. That is true. You will get to sleep. All right, so Twitch is still talking about cooking. That's how exciting we are, or how hard we are to hear. Either or. How about you, Amanda? What do you do for creativity? This Amanda? Sure, why not? Um, I don't know how to answer this question. Should I talk about my group? I, I run yeah. this, this lovely uh, group on Facebook called I Had to Look at This and Now I'm Making You. And it's just a, a, a place for art, I would say. All kinds of art, different mediums, um, like furries, frequent, adult babies, poop accidents, that kind of stuff. Art. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll tell you, my favorite way to create is I eat five servings of edibles and I, I, I meditate in a dark room for about an hour and a half. And then I don't really remember it and I wake up with a song written. It's pretty nice. All right, so we have a musician, a curator, and a performance, method performance actor, it sounds like. This one? Yeah, why not? Sure. All right. Uh, my favorite way to uh, draw inspiration is I scream and scream and scream go out to a dark forest, kill some people. Usual things. Stabbing, um, of course. Yeah. And then, like, it's like it just, the ideas flow from there. Like, I'm going to draw an apple. It's just mm -hmm. an apple. Are you kidding me? I guess we're calling back. We never could be at the door. All right, our technical advisor is leaping into action. Thank you, Dave. You may or may not know. Tell them to mute their phone. <laughs> yeah, no. Look, just put it in H. <laughs> you ever watched a train wreck? There's a gear in the upper I have, right I'm on one. I think I'm in one. All right. Well planned. Well planned. I feel like I need a cup of coffee right now so I can be like. <laughs> This is quite a noisy episode. This is so much noise. Yeah, but it's fine. Just like the inside of my head. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me how a muted iMac is making noise. That is not my field of expertise anymore. I spent the last five years huffing gas fumes to kill any creative urge I might have. Did it work? And, yep, a little too well, apparently. <laughs> Unleaded or diesel? No idea what you just said. I said unleaded or diesel. Yes? I think they mean mustard. Oh. Okay, you finally yeah. got it. I'm sorry, but huffing gas. At leave. last. Silence no, Huffing mustard gas. Mustard gas. But, but that would be a little bit itchy in your throat. Maybe it is, weak. but it gives you I that nice, weak. sweet release. I, I'm dead? I mean, That's the only release there is. Yeah. But all the but all the DMT in your head would make you real creative. 
unfortunately, then you wouldn't be able to use it. Just just lay out a sketch pad before you huff the mustard gas. How much time do you have? Depends on how hard you huff. I see. I see. If you're thinking about it too much. You just huff the gas and you just go. So I just gotta no. do it. Yeah, just just jump in. Do we have any like on the set? I hope so. That would be real nice. That would be very um, beneficial to this. Because then we wouldn't have any them? creative problems. We would just be creative. I think the internet tells you how to make it. What's what's your favorite creative color? I think King of the Hill told you how to make creative it. Creative color. Yeah. Just any color. Gray? What other things are gray? Your soul? Yeah. Great talk. Yeah. My will to live. It's beautiful. Mine too. Mine too. So it's awkward and still take conversation. <laughs> Why the hell did they throw a bunch of introverts on a panel and tell us to do what we do best? I would answer, but I'm I'm anxious to do that. <laughs> this is all right. Well, let's keep this train wreck rolling for another 40 minutes. Can't wait. Fantastic. Best night of my life. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to torment you with basic party games, because I have nothing better to do with my life right now. Do it. I do not know what this card is that is on my hat. That will not stay there on its own, I'm guessing. Okay. Actually, actually, we got this for that. <gasps> Hand me a piece of tape. created an adhesive just for this purpose. Thank you, Amanda. Oh my God. You're welcome. Right? All right. I'm gonna keep my head tilted so I cannot cheat by looking at our in-studio monitor. I guess you're supposed to help me guess without telling me what the card is. Okay, all right. Um, it's for an orifice. Is it a whistle? Is it a picture of Cat's wedding night? A straw. You got it. Board of this game already. We got another one. I have like 50 of these. Yeah, well, we got 40 more minutes. We've got 40 minutes. Let's go. All right, what's this next one? That did not go as planned. Wow. Nah, my hair's you not are very sticky. Too greasy, Amanda. Too very greasy. greasy. I'm a very greasy one. Here, I'll hold it on my head. There. Um, it's what I want right now. Um, it doesn't say um, the sweet release of death. It's intermittently. Um, Slow down a car. Brakes. Look at the camera for a second so that they can figure it out, but don't cheat. Excellent. Now go back to guessing, minions. Go back to guessing. Oh, wait, we are oh I did it. It's break. Ready for another yeah. card. What's that? I did it. It Get was break. Card. Fantastic. Great idea. Let's have one. <laughs> Stochastic Metal Union. Drown out our sorrows with your noise.
so much more creative than we are. You guys seeing this? <laughs> Man, that was a that was a great music right there. Like they will do this all night normally. I mean, feel free to keep providing background noise. That's just to tone it down slightly. Warning. Back, please hide us, hide our shame. <laughs> Actually, that is a really good point there, though. They can't do that all night and have been doing it for 25 minutes. Yeah. And we're struggling to have a conversation that lasts two. I, I mean, just have trouble talking to you. I understand. I'm too sober, honestly. Uh, I agree. Usual problem here because we're not allowed to drink in, in the studio. We got to get someone to cover for us while we go out and get a couple shots in. I like that idea. That well, let's send it to the band for another five minutes and we'll <laughs> be right back. You had your chance. <laughs> Where do you think I went? So, but like I say, creative difficulties. Exactly. We got them. How do yeah. we deal with them? Uh, I'm not good at word. Self work. And that's it, isn't it? Here we stand in the presence of musical. Do you want real answers or answers out of my ass? I will take either at this point. Um, I mean, let's not get ourselves. We're straddled between musicians on one side, an actual concert on the other. What if the Earth was a cube? What if it is flat, but on four sides? Have we ever thought about that? I don't Whoa, think we have. Whoa, are you saying the Earth is a cube? I'm saying the Earth is a cube. The Earth is a cube. 100%. I didn't create that, it's a fact. So I guess I shouldn't have even mentioned it. I don't know how to okay. talk to you right now. <laughs> yeah. I will say, one of my favorite theories about the Earth being flat in general was that what keeps us from flying off of it is magnetic pull of the iron in our blood towards the center of the planet. Oh, so we're like a magnet. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. No, it does not. It makes zero sense. It makes the most sense. And that is correct, Internet. Cubes do have six sides. You can tell he's not a math major. They have six? Yes, a cube has six sides. Oh. I wasn't thinking of the You're thinking of the, of the top and the bottom one is a three-dimensional object, like a planet. Oh, that's a cube. Yeah. I was thinking the round one. It's a... What? I was thinking the round one. A bouncy the, ball? The round cube? Yeah, yeah. You know, the one that's... A cylinder? That's like a round and then flat on either end? I can smell toast. This is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Earth was a cylinder? How would we stay on it then? Do you think it would just roll in one direction it's and like a the hamster sides wheel. that were flat? You can't Perfect go to the construct of pulleys. Who's pulling the pulleys? God. Time to bring out your Bible. All right. F find out where it says about the earth and the pulleys. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a verse about that oh, in Genesis. Yeah. I think? Cylinder pulleys. Let's see, this one's about rape. This one's about being beat to death for being a slave. Racism, racism, racism. There's That one's happy. There's something about Burt Bentley writes on Saturday. Oh, that's not a... Oh, that's my great grandpa. Oh. Oh. Did, did he know about the police? Um, well, he's meeting God now. Oh. Yeah. Could bring in a so, Ouija board in and... Uh, I know, we can ask. ask him. Is there an Ouija like board here? I'll get one on my phone. All right, we can't stay on topic, and that's fine. <laughs> I did read an interesting theory, or not a theory, um, someone saying if the Earth actually was flat, the gravitational pull would be focused inwards like it normally is. But if we tried to go to either side, it would become increasingly more difficult, and eventually, when we reach the outer rings, it would be like trying to scale a perfectly um, perfectly uh, vertical mountain, but walking on a flat plane. I, I heard an equally plausible theory that if the Earth was flat, cats would have knocked everything off of it by now. I spaced out while both of you guys were talking. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, Which one? All of them. 
I never asked to come to your TED Talks. They always then why the fuck me. did you buy TED Talks? That is true. In all fairness, the Amanda at the end of the row here, we kind of abducted off the street. We should apologize for that, to drag you into our jigsaw-like <laughs> house of horrors. But now that you're here, we hope you're having fun. Perhaps by the end of it, I will have had fun. <laughs> or a reasonable, you know, facsimile. Which, yeah, screw our original subject. Let's stick with our weird earth conspiracy theories. This is way better. Donut All right. Conspiracy shape. theories? Well, you know, donut I'm shape. Sorry, I got a little shape. too excited. Oh, no, bring out whatever conspiracy theory you want. Ooh. I mean, I'm going to crap all over it, but make it happen. Okay, okay, let's see. The one. one that Avril Lavigne is dead and replaced by a clone. I like that one. I like that one, too, and I think it might be real. I don't know if it's real. It's pretty uh, convincing. Fearful, we've lost track. Honestly, our handlers left the show. No one's manning the cattle prods. We're on our own. We're scared and confused. I was promised cattle prods, and I'm, I'm honestly a little offended. I've gotten All off right. topic how many times, and there's been no cattle prod. Okay, after the show, we can make some cattle prod happen. In the meantime, Avril Levine dead, possibly a clone. What do you think, Internet? I think you would know, being a clone. I'm not going out of my clone bag. The thing is, I love the idea of Avril Lavigne being replaced by a clone, but why Avril? Why does she get a clone? I want a clone. That's it, that's it. Right? They were really big on the people. teen pop market. Uh, but she was never at the top of the game. Britney should have been replaced with a clone. But Britney didn't die. You got for Avril was speed. replaced because they died. Hit me up with them. I'm True. watching you. As Britney's going to live forever. Off. She's toxic. By the power of the gays alone, she will live forever. I just don't understand why Avril was so important that we need to replace her. And then you bring the clone out, and the clone starts recording songs like Hello Kitty, and now she has a Christian album? Maybe the clone's rising up. All right. So the internet's theory is that the Avril is dead is like Paul is dead from the Beatles. Ooh. Oh. Does that mean anything to you people? Yeah, Paul McCartney's supposedly dead too and has been. Okay. For a while. I, I honestly like to picture like a weekend at Bernie's type setup where there are no clones at all and they're just dead. And just get like posed. So I saw Paul McCartney on Carpool Karaoke. Oh, this is not secured to anything. I should be careful. There we go. One sound scepter later. I saw uh, Paul McCartney on Carpool Karaoke, and he seemed pretty alive at that point. Clone. Can a clone sing as well as the original? If they use the DNA, I they have the so. same vocal cords. But would there not be some level of training involved? There would be. There would be. I mean, you already got this quickly growing clone who's going to rapidly age to reach the age of the other person. Right, but if you rapidly age them, you miss all those I'm formative sure you years have, when they I'm, pick up the skills. I'm sure you have money to also train them. Dave, how fast can you train a clone? I have no idea what you just said. We're gonna assume quickly, so. I just picture like that training montage in Rocky with the Russian, you know, when they got in that high-tech lab, when they cloned Avril, they threw her in a high-tech lab with like a Hot Topic attached to it and a bunch of like guitars that were out of tune. I like this. Yeah. All right. And the, the clone lived there for like a year. Woo. So our current suspicion is that Hot Topics are secret clone labs in which they create musicians. Yes. That makes so much sense. Right? I was born in a Hot Topic. Mm -hmm. That makes an alarming amount of sense as well. Mm -hmm. It was great. Um, I got a little baby choker and uh, these cool socks but they went like past my feet, way far, a couple feet. Cause they were like knee highs and I was a baby. Babies don't wear knee highs, except for me, that one time in Hot Topic when I was born. Your story's going nowhere. What else you got for me? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta think more conspiracies, give me a second. I know some, but they're like really controversial. Doing full of calls to action. I mean, you wanna talk 9-11? Bush did 9-11. Yeah. Like, I mean, straight up. Look, we've already got, like, the Jesus jungle on this station, and someone else says 9-11 trutherism. So we'll avoid that one for now. Some other, <laughs> some other show handles that. You ruin all my fun. What's that? You ruin all my fun. Yeah, I do. What other fun can I ruin for them? What other fun? got a caller. Holy what? crap. Make it happen. That's one of my exes. 
Let's do this. Hello? What do you got Hi. for us? Hi, what's your name? Uh, Janet. I'm so sorry you called. <laughs> Welcome to our dumpster fire. How can we help you? Um, I'm just curious if you guys want to ask each other some more searching questions than have really been covered so far. Searching questions like, why don't you ask us a searching question? Get us started, kick us off. I don't know, I just want to see more emotional vulnerability in the show. Oh. That would require me to have emotions. All right, here's the plan. Let's make middle Amanda cry. Oh. That wouldn't be hard, honestly. Right, let's get some emotional vulnerability. I mean, this one has no power over me, so. Katie, what you got? What'd you get? True, Katie would be the one to make him cry. Uh, You've given us a challenge, Janet. We're gonna try to rise to it. Oh, wow. Goodness. Spotlight's Thank on me, you. then. Okay. A question for you to answer to... And show emotional vulnerability. Okay. All right. Um... Oh, no. I mean, it's not like the pressure's on with our, like, three viewers. <laughs> Come on. We could talk about our relationship with our mothers. I mean, that's not sensitive for me. Speak for yourself. I could talk about my dad. Oh, true, true. You want to hear about right. our mommy issues, daddy issues? <laughs> All right, ask me a question about Scott. I mean, as a clone, I am curious about these things. You're a clone? Yeah. You know Avril? I mean, no, dad and mom are just terms for people who built us in the chambers. All right, that's, all right, let's stay on topic for once. Got a question about Scott. Um, why didn't your dad love you? Wow, he just went for it. Um, they didn't want I me like to be that. born. They didn't want to have a second child because they already tried to kill my sister. Um, they smoked a lot of meth and then they tried to kill me. And then my mom beat the shit out of them, sent them to the hospital, and filed for divorce. Well, those are the actions, but why? They never loved themselves. That makes some sense. And they were never fully put together. They're 40 and still living with their parents because they can't hold down a job. I see. And they're asking me for a kidney. That's not happening. <laughs> that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Yep. What I could hear of it. You drink a lot of vodka, you need that kidney. I just drink, like, okay, I'd probably uh, kill a sailor. Crack my heart open, let's do this. All right, that's, that, that's gonna be you. It could be literally anything. Um, tell us about some emotional traumas you have. All right, uh, so one opening. time in my hometown, uh, I realized that I was very gay, and uh, I went to school after that, and it, it wasn't very fun. Not at all. Uh, I feel like that's the Cliff Notes version. Like, I picked up a little yellow booklet on my way out of the bookstore, so I could just kind of skim the subject real quick on my way to take the test. I couldn't hear you at all. No. I'll try pointing this at you as I talk then. I feel like that was the Cliff Notes version of it. Like I just picked up a little yellow booklet on my uh, way yes, out of the yes, bookstore yes. and skimmed it. Okay, well, there was this guy and his name was Julian and he was super homophobic. And one time I went out to the, uh, the fields after school and I was playing my trumpet. And uh, I also had a dislocated kneecap, so I was on crutches. And I was a really bad trumpet player. I was like in sixth grade. I thought I was great though, I had a huge ego. But uh, yeah, Julian uh, was overhearing me and he came over to me and he beat me up real bad. And so then after that, uh, I went, well after I got out of the, anyways. Yeah, he got, he, he got expelled and it was pretty nice. Didn't really heal anything, but I mean, he's gone now, so that's great. Fuck any, any more traumas? I can do this all day. I mean, you sound alarmingly cheerful for that being a trauma. We could move on to Amanda. We could move on to Amanda. Amanda, why'd you marry Amanda? Or we could move on to the stochastic metal. No, 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 I will take this question. All right. 
This it's lesbian a- Amanda married a man because I grew up in a very conservative, religious household. My mother is a children's minister and my father is a music minister at the church I was raised in. I was also homeschooled. It's a lot of programming to deprogram and I told myself that I was bisexual for a long time because... Okay. Exactly. Everyone who knows me is like, okay. <laughs> Because that was easier, and it took a really long time to deprogram all that harmful purity culture bullshit, and here I am. Shaved head and combat boots on public access TV. In flannel. In flannel. <laughs> now, now, how did all of these traumas uh, support your creativity? What did you get from it? Um, OCD, lots of years of uh, therapy, 10 milligrams of Lexapro, what's up? You know, I can keep going. Lots of self-loathing. Yeah. Did, it, did it inspire any, uh, let's see, did it inspire you to create? Did it inspire you to make? I have written a book, if that's what you're asking, yes. So the, what's the book about? The book is posted anonymously online. My name is not connected to it in any way. Last time I looked, it had like in the neighborhood of 200,000 reads. And it's like crime fiction, because yeah, true yeah. crime's my jam. And what's it about? A motorcycle gang. Ooh, what do they do? Illegal activities. It's about a bunch of lesbians. Out it is that. not, there is not a single gay person in there, actually, surprisingly, oh. yeah. Wow. I should go rewrite it as a lesbian motorcycle do you, gang. Do you think um, any traumas growing up affected you creating this? What would a lesbian Why am I getting like this? Is like a- <laughs> no, 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 I'm interested. What would, a, what would a lesbian motorcycle gang be into? Probably the same thing, they'd just be lesbians. So yeah. And by, by you know, they'd just be 10 times better because lesbians make everything better. Yeah, so like better meth, better, you know, motorcycles, better- um, Fades. Yeah, exactly. Not very gross, you so know? So if everyone in this gang is heterosexual, are you- do you feel on some level that this gang you've created is a reflection of your idea of heterosexuals? You know, it might be because it was a coping mechanism when I was, my sham of a marriage was falling apart and I wrote it like blasted through. It's got like 20 chapters and chapters are around 2,000 words each. So I mean, like it's pretty hefty, but I just blasted through. I wrote it in like two months and I have never reread it. It was like a coping mechanism. It served its purpose. It's there, and it's just. I'm I'll glad you really made it. Can read it. If you can find it. That is impressive. I gotta say, Janet, you're impressive that your anonymous question somehow got us back on track. I know. The subject of the show. Well done. It it, well it done. looks like. I didn't realize everybody would be so emotionally honest. Now, I'm contractually obligated to let the Catech Metal Union have another go at our eardrums while we go get shots. Gentlemen, if you would please. Um, I can't hear you.
credits. Find them online, I'm certain, somewhere. I don't know how to spell their name. Watch the credits at the end. So we found out that trauma inspires creativity. That seems to be true. You get most of your work done when you are traumatized or otherwise driven, which probably highlights the struggles many of us have when we're driven by strictly monetary desires. We end up doing day jobs instead because it's easy. Van Gogh was deeply traumatized and they drank yellow paint because they believed yellow was the color of happiness. They got severe poisoning, so. I wish that were me. I know. Wait, so you were drinking yellow paint or that you were so depressed and untreated for it that you thought it was a good idea? Oh, oh no, that, that is already me. Stomach poisoning. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Okay, I mean, there's like a paint store down the road. Like, it's a solvable problem. Oh yeah, another musical break. Let's go get some shots. Maybe there's a two for one. We'll get really creative after all that paint. Yeah. True. Are we just going to be like eating it with a spoon out of the thing or are we just going to be spraying it? Let's get it? a beer bong. A, <gasps> uh, just a, that's that's really creative. A creative idea. Thanks, Trauma. To put paint in a beer bong. Thank you, Trauma. Bad <laughs> drinking choices into <laughs> worse drinking <laughs> choices. <laughs> all right, what's, what's the most creative thing you've done? Um, abstract drawings of nature. Very creative. What was your last abstract drawing of nature? What was it about? What, what drove you to do it? Um, the drawing of the thing I see in my night terrors. Oh, that one? Yeah. I remember you talking about that one. Um, what drove me to do it was wanting to get rid of um, something that makes me go into sleep paralysis and scream mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. nights since I was four. Well, I'm, I'm glad that it, did it help you? It started to help. Well, I'm it's glad. It's not done. I'm very glad. We're working on it. Creative processes are sometimes hard, yeah. like right now. What's your most creative thing? Most creative or most recently creative thing? The one that you, you've enjoyed the most. The one that I've enjoyed the most. The thing I've enjoyed creating the most would have to be One time, took apart a bunch of microwaves, took out their transformers to connect together, hooked those up to some, some, some carbon rods. I remember this. Yeah, and uh, it was just a little foundry to melt stuff. It was really fun. It was super dangerous. It had two plugins. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, no, I, I could have. I, uh, <laughs> when, when, when water. In, in, in rocks is really, really hot, it'll explode. And when there's any water that's in, that just drops into a really hot thing, then that'll also explode. And uh, so one time it blew up and it was, anyways, it was a very creative process. <laughs> it was very fun. The, the best part about it was taking apart the microwaves. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you. I think recently the most creative thing I've done uh, would be like with food, with, with cooking and presentation. Uh, I'm not really sure if I have a drive for that, like a drive to make food, you but definitely, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, when, when it's like, oh, I don't want to make this, oh, it's going to be so, but then you get all the ingredients together, you get it all, you put it together, and the whole process, it goes from a really horrible thing, and so this is coming together, this is great. And Whoa. I feel like it's a great, you know, really quick, uh, uh, word that so isn't coming out. Science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really a quick way to uh, go through the creative process without having to, you know, kick yourself in the brain. Just got to think, what do I want to eat? And then you eat it. Laura? You're welcome. What? I'm sorry, Amanda 3? Okay. Yes, Amanda 2. What's the most creative thing you've done? Ever? Yeah. Well, I wrote a book. I <laughs> said that. Okay, we're done talking about your goddamn book. Stop <laughs> plugging your book. This isn't the view. I'm not plugging it <laughs> by any means. It's hard to plug an anonymous book online. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Please then, don't read it. It's probably awful. Some, well, it's, well, it had 200,000 views. Like, I feel the same way every time I say, like, someone paid money for this trite. What's wrong with you people? Right. And then again, Fifty Shades got published, so for the stars. <laughs> I recently learned about a book called um, My Beautiful Measles. It's a children's book. 
that um, encourages children to be happy when they get measles. What oh, what? Gluten-free, yeah. <laughs> free-range, organic is that? I mean, it sounds about white to me. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so Katarina told me about this book like, that they're trying to is sell it to different to preschools to there's a about for that? Um, this little girl who has measles <laughs> and how she loves her measles. I mean, don't, don't specify what vaccine uh, it is. I can't wait for the thrilling sequel, beautiful cure. polio. I, I mean, uh, fucking spread it. Yeah? But I mean, like, you know, vaccines, am I right? Do we have any anti-vaxxers here? No. Have any what? No. Anti-vaxxers? No, I got my flu shot. Anti-vaxxer? That makes one. Call in uh, if you're no. anti. No. I don't think we have time for an anti-vaxxer to call in and get yelled at by me. <laughs> oh my. That would be an interesting episode. I mean, I'm already going to be yelling at Amanda too all night long. That's what it seems like. Yes, it appears we've all learned a valuable lesson today. One, these guys are awesome. Two, trauma spurns creativity for reasons that if there is a god is cruel and capricious. <laughs> Like, we all want the end result of the creative process, but what the creator has to go through is simply malicious. We all want a sandwich, but, but getting everything to get the sandwich sucks. I feel that on a spiritual level. As someone who has ordered Postmates for the last three weeks and not cooked, I feel that. You're a preschool teacher. How do you have that kind of money? I have a second job. That's fair. What other life lessons have we learned? We've, We've learned, learned mystery caller Janet saves our asses. We don't know her, but we're thankful. We have learned that it's very, very hard to create on the spot. Yeah, and then we're pretty much throwing out all the notes that were left for us. Well, uh, Which we're pretty much, here's some flashcards, and here are some Star Trek Mad Libs. Would you rather do Star Trek Mad Libs? I'll be doing them through the Twitch stream on my way home because I have a long bus ride ahead of me. We'll fill them out. We'll see what happens. Why not? All right, let's play this game again. We saw five minutes. Why not? Yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll just cut it out with this one. This is my way of saying I'm stealing Cat's Mad Libs book. You what? I'm stealing the Mad Libs book. I'm announcing it here on television. It's mine now. Hold this above your head. Um, when you meet the right girl. Never going to happen? Oh, damn, that was close. Wizards use it. What rainbow dash screams while getting railed? I'm so angry that I think I know the answer. <laughs> is, it, is it magic? Yes. I, uh, I spent a lot of time in the dark corners of the internet. I know, I used to be a cop for the dark corners of the internet. <laughs> Y'all want another one? Yeah, give it to Amanda 2. Let's see what we got. All right, Amanda 2. Coming from Amanda 1. Let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna... How about we do this one without words? Okay, you want yeah. pantomime it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do this one without speaking. like a speaking. minute to pantomime it out before All I right. start trying to remember how to close the show down other than screaming and whipping my pants off. Okay, okay. We got about a we got a, about a minute. Put it on top of your put it above your head. Okay, okay. Right. Laundry? Clothes? Swimming, ocean, water. A boat? Ship? Sail. You got it. There we go. Y you did it. Yay. You're good at these games. Y you won. I wouldn't have any prizes today. That's usually handled by better people than us. Yeah, your prize is disappointment. Oh. Just like everyone watching. Can I just have a severe beating? 
You didn't even hit me. There, that's what you get. <laughs> oh, are we playing it again? Because yeah. I was about to. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Uh, sh show it up again. Show it up again. Show it to the. Show it to the. Well, they guess this. I suppose I'll start trying to sign us out. I'd like to thank everyone in the control booth whose names I generally don't remember. Jacob, deliverer of punishment. Ross, the adjuster of video. Other people. I like your dance, Dave. You're doing solid. Tony, the omnipotent. <laughs> Sakatic Metal Union for playing through the whole show, distracting us from our foibles. People who let me call them Amanda all day because I honestly can't tell them apart. I'm Amanda One. I'm Amanda, Amanda Two. One of my cares about Amanda oh, Two. My. I'm gonna get the cattle prod. This is no, Cat and Real, one. Real Cat and no, Real I'm Amanda's regret for letting prod. us be here. Yeah. Did I already thank Open Signal for letting us use their stuff? Because thank you for letting us use your stuff. We appreciate letting us touch it, and getting our grease all over it. We know it takes about two weeks to get the smell out. Too bad. We're gonna do it again anyways next month. Um, did he guess what it was? I couldn't hear a thing you said. That's fine, as long as Jacob heard or someone cares. So, dance, dance to the music. <laughs>